Okay, guys, so let's jump into the Pixel Lab work face and start to design our logo. One special feature of this logo that we're going to create is that it is a it is an emblem type of logo slash an abstract slash a letter form kind of type of logo. I actually deliberately want to design this logo so that uh, students can pay more attention and understand how you can combine all these features to come out with amazing design. All right. Yes. So let's have a go at it. First thing first, we have to change our background. Let's take out these are default text. All right. Then we change the background. Go to the background tool, select your color. Let's change the background to white. And that is it. Then we go to the shape tool and we are going to do something here that we have not done before. We're going to use a tool which we have not used so far in the course of this training. The Bezaya tool. All right. You can use this tool to draw different kind of elements to design different kind of shapes and all that are not native to the pixel app to the pixel app application i mean that there are shapes that are not in the shape section or in the shape option of pixel app all right customize shapes yes so here we go click on the bizarre tool and this is the default mode all right next thing you want to do i want you to pay attention you will see parts where i click on the screen you will see dots here you can see I am clicking on the screen and you're seeing that sign, that dot sign there. It means anywhere you see this, it means I just click there. That is what you have to do. All right. So now let's start our design. So come over here to the middle part. All right. Those are options. All right. I just want you to just follow what I'm doing and then take your time to do it on your own. You won't find any tutorial where the bizarre tool is used because it is actually a very difficult and delicate tool to use. So I'll come down here right then scroll up again and then click here automatically i want to tap here good once i'm done with that and then i want to come down here and tap here good so now I, this is what i want to use to design first thing first i want to follow the line shape the line design of the the default uh uh design there so i'll just come now for you to start designing if you see this sign here by the left with a plus it means the more you click on it the more connect or the more lines you're drawing okay so we are done with that line and if you tap on this one here in the middle down here at the middle here it means that you want to design this one i just tap on it and it sets i'm ready to design so what do i do i keep tapping on any of these junction or connectors and automatically it uh, those are the things i'm going to use to design so i want to start from here first thing first sorry so this is what I want to do now. So guys, just watch exactly what I'm doing. All right. Now, next thing I want to do is take here up. You can only get this right by paying attention to this tutorial. Okay. Now I have to bring this down here and take it inside. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So as you can see, we've gotten I've gotten the shape I want. Just now, I'm just going to review it and see if I've actually gotten all my lines cleaned out. Now, what I am going to do, this is it. What I am going to do so that this does not uh, uh, drag too long for you, so that you it, it, it doesn't become complicated and discouraging for you, is that I am going to save this uh, shape now. You can use it for your own practice. But I just what why I use the I try to create this shape for you to see is because so that you become conversant with the bizarre tool. All right. So I'll still go back to edit to clean out my job. I think my job is the way is okay the way I want it to be. Now next thing I want to do is come back, is go down. All right. I want to fill my shape. Now if I save it this way, it's just going to have an outline, the black outline around it. But I want to fill the inner part. All right. I want the inner part filled. First of all, uh, yes. So once I click this right part of the screen, I can move it anywhere. So right now, 
if I save it this way, it's going to only have outline why the center will be open, but I just want it to be filled, okay? So what do I do next? I come down, and this is filled. From op the opacity is down to 0%. I increase it all the way to 100%. And you can see it is at default. The color, the default color is white, but I'll just come down here and change the color, all right? I can choose to give my logo, this logo, a gradient color. And you all know what we always do with gradient color, right? But we're just going to use a plain color today. So I'll just use this red color, and that is it. I'll click OK, and there we go. So you see, I now have my shape in place. Yes. OK, now, guys, the next thing we want to do is this. First thing first, before I do anything, let me save this uh, shape, OK? Let me save this shape as a PNG file in my gallery. Then I'm going to share it on the platform for you all to use as use in carrying out your class projects. Because, it's, of course, like I said, it's a difficult task using the Bezier tool. I just want to show you what to do with it. An elementary level, all you need to do is don't be discouraged. Keep going at it until you become perfect with that. It's like driving. You have to just keep doing it till you get used to it. All right? So now I'll just go here, come here. We all know how to save our job already. Ultra. Ultra, please. Oh, no. Uh, let's go back. If I save it this with this background, of course, you know it's going to be a JPG uh, file, an image file. So for it to be a PNG without background, we have to go to the background to and hit on transparent. Now there's no background, so we can save it. Save PNG as yes, default ultra, default quality ultra, and then save export image to gallery. So automatically we have that this image in our gallery. Okay, so it, it's going to be shared in the class. Then we can go back. No, sorry, come up here and go back to where we were before. All right, now guys. We've done this, right? Okay, I'm trying to position my work now. All right? Okay, good. The next thing we want to do is come to the shape tool here and I'm going to do something. I want to manipulate something here. What I am trying to create, I am trying to create a like image of a hanger, all right? Yes, just to one of the message I want to have in my logo to show out, show that, okay, this is a laundry or a laundry business or so. So I'll just go over, I'll come here. Oh no, let's take this recorder out of the way. All right, so I'll come here, click on text, go to edit, take out the default text, and then I'll bring in the question mark sign. Don't worry guys, I'm sure you'll be wondering what am I going to do with the question mark sign. You'll get to find out shortly. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm going to increase the size. All right. Okay. That is enough. I think I like that size. Yes. I like this. I like this. Okay. I like this. All right. Now that we have gotten the size, I'll come. I'll do something here now. All right. Okay. Yes. So guys, pay attention. I'm trying to do this without drawing. I'm trying to use simple, simple trick to do this. So just pay attention to what I'm doing. First of all, let's lock our elements up so that they won't be flying about. All right. Okay, now that we have that, come to the question mark again. Now, we're going to use another tool that we haven't used so far. we we'll just come here, look for the eraser tool. Eraser tool. Okay. Yes, I think we just passed it. Haven't we? Okay. Uh eraser tool the eraser tool oh sorry okay we're using the the text uh, version all right no problem we'll come to that shortly now the next thing we want to do i want us to zoom into this work because i want to manipulate something here okay here something i want to do here all right good okay so i'll go to the position button reduce it to one pixel and move I want to align this so that there's symmetry there, okay? Yes, so that there's symmetry and it doesn't look like as if one thing is placed on top of one another. I want it to look like as if everything was drawn to the, together. All right, guys, I think I have that. Yes, next thing I want to bring in here, let's click OK. Then I'll go over to shape. Then in the shape section, I am going to select uh, this. All right, so I'll click OK. Of course, our, our our image is too large. Remember, we zoomed into the screen. So we'll just go over to shape option here. 
and reduce the size of it to where we, to the value we can handle by just doing this you can see that it has moved into this then we change the color for this so that we can actually see it of course it, the default color is white so let's change it to the red let's give it the red we are using for this design good now that we have that i want to turn it this way good then yes you're going to find out shortly what i'm going to do with this keep watching i'll just go this way come down this way take it to one and blending up, up. i think we need to increase a little bit okay let's increase let's increase by one yes how does that look let's find out now nah. uh, okay a little bit out of okay we're still going to get it no problem let's highlight it and still keep working at it position button mm -hmm. take it to one so guys you just keep doing this on thing you have gotten something you're sure is well balanced okay just one more one more step Okay, we can work with this. Next thing we want to do is duplicate that that shape. Yes, I want to duplicate that shape. So I copy, then bring it down to that same point. This is where we're trying to work on. I'll just do this this way, this way. A little. All right, guys. Yes, I think I've achieved what I'm trying to do here. So I'm going to merge them all with the question mark and with our curve shape, merge everything together. Good. It's merged. I want to do it this way now. So, guys, if you look at this, it is it shows more or less. Let's go back to our default screen. All right. So if you look at these guys, it look more or less like a this looks more like um something. Of course, it's beginning to have the look of an anger, right? It's beginning to have a look of an anger. That is what I am trying to achieve with this shape. All right, that dot under the question sign, I don't want it. So this is where I go to the eraser tool. Look for the eraser to come down, and this is the eraser itself. If you increase it too much, you will wipe out everything. For instance, if I do this, you see, I've wiped out everything. Unless so I have to come back to up here to this undo sign here, click on it, and it's back. So you have to reduce it to the size you want to use. After having done that, we we'll just come here and wipe this dot out. Don't need it in my design. Okay, and if what you're trying to wipe is too small, here's the zoom sign and you can just increase your element by using your tool your thumb and your first finger to zoom in and out just you know just what you do with your zoom in and out usually with your phone then you want to drag it you use one your finger to drag it to the point where you can see zoom it out enough so that you can see what you're cleaning your your then when you're done click on the percentage itself it will take you back to zero if you want to zoom in you zoom in and you want it to stay this size you click on the zoom icon itself it will stand there till now once you're done like this next thing we want to do is click on that uh, uh same points click on the percentage itself the value itself and it goes back then we exit now you see we have this now all right guys so having achieved this let's move on zoom this out this way you want to see the value you can always, I'll be showing you the value here by coming down here, 48% for the width, 22 for the height as we go. All right, next thing we want to do, I just want to impute the text that I'm going to design with this in this logo. So I'll just go to the logo option, the text option, sorry, and then click edit, take out this and impute the word greens. I haven't done that. Use the caps log, exit with OK. Now, next is to increase the size of that. Uh, text 
okay we'll drag it just here All right, let's add the, the fonts I want to use to it first. Okay, I have the font already out. It's always, I'm going to give drop this font so that you all can down, have it downloaded also. It's already in our resources that we're using. So we just look for it, it's called Atlin. This is it. Just click on it this way and okay. All right, okay. Rinse, rinse. So I'll just I'm just going to drag it this way. No, take it up. Okay, I am going to do something here awkward, but yes. Sorry, I didn't have to wipe out that text. So let me just exit it, then go back again. What I wanted to do is take out the N and leave a, a triple space in between, and then come down here. All right, the next thing I want to do is, I'm trying to create a kind of synchronization in my logo here. Next thing I want to do is copy the same size. No, sorry, copy. Yes, once I have it, just edit all that out, give it space. Type N, caps log, then OK. All right. So I'll just take it this way. Increase the size. Yes, I want it to have a different look from what the rest of the design. Guys, can you see what I'm trying to do there? <laughs> yes. OK. Let's move on. Next is to lock them all up so that they don't move out of place, right? Then we'll go to, oh, uh, okay. The next text, we we'll put the next text, which is laundry. Laundry. then caps log and okay okay we have that let's bring it here mm, let's drag it out and place and see how it looks uh, okay okay yeah we can work we can still work with it well let's change the font to the font i want to use I'm using Mon montserrat on this uh, text so i'm going to click on montserrat black that is it yes make it bold okay is it too bold Okay, we can just leave it this way. We will still achieve what we want to do. All right, rinse. Okay, rinse laundry. That's what I'm trying to spell out. Having done that, uh, let me lock that into place. Sorry, lock it up. And Try to position it more accurately by using the positioning tool. Yes, I don't want it running out of... There is an alignment, the kind of alignment I'm trying to create for this design. All right. Mm, not too close to comfort. Huh? For comfort, okay. Yes. Hmm. Guys, it's already looking like a logo already, yes? Good. Now, next thing we want to do is... Okay. 
how do this go to the shape tool select circle from the option click ok all right so i'll drag this out now before we use this circle i want to move this element towards the center all right let's leave it the way it is please well first of all first of all let's disable visibility for our oh no let's disable visibility for our other elements so that we can have the workspace to work on what i'm trying to do here okay here's the circle let's first of all give it a color let's use the default color red all right then go to copy haven't done that let's come to color for the second one disable the color to have the white for the red let's centralize it good do the same to the copied element tool see it's directly on top of the other one next thing we want to do is reduce size i am doing this so that others you others can be able to do that i have other options of quickly doing this but i'm going to take my time so that you get to understand every detail okay mm -hmm. okay let's centralize i haven't done that opposition now we try to position our work now so we use the position tool we'll do this move the circle towards the left just i want you to pay attention to this now all right haven't done this next thing i'm going to do is to merge both of them but before i merge i want to confirm something i want the size of it to be the same as my hanger handle so i'll disable this one just to see okay it's going to be wider but we're going to reduce the size anyways or we'll do something else yes I haven't done this what we're going to do is let's disable it now and then we merge our two circle one two merge and there we have it all right haven't done this the next thing we want to do is use the cope button where's the cope button come down here the cope option and select out this part and cut it off cut out the remaining part yes is that what i want to do we'll find out shortly let's enable our jobs now but before we do that please let's go to this eraser to remember that this element you see is actually a round shape with the white background inside so we have to make it transparent and that is what we're going to do remember automatically this tool here the eraser the erase color tool always work automatically on on the white color at default so once we click on it automatically see what happened there the, that element was on top of our hanger uh, element then the moment i hit erase color you see it becomes transparent just to show you yes so we're done with that right let's bring out our other elements by enabling visibility so we can see what the shape of our logo is beginning to take all right all right okay we're going to increase our laundromat uh, a little bit the size we're going to increase the size for the laundromat let's go to text increase size to that is okay i think not too much I'm trying to get 140 let's try 140 and see move it into position and see how it looks does it look too much i don't want it to look too too much 
but I kind of like the way it was before, right? So maybe we'll just stick to how it was before. Stick to how it was before, yes. Just reposition it more with that object there. Okay. 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 All right. I hope everything is in. Okay. Everything is in shape. First of all, let's change this color of our hanger to the red itself. Mm -hmm. And then change the 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 end color also to red. Let's go here. Go to color. Select red for the end. Okay. Having done that. Having done this, we're going to duplicate our shape, our circle designed, our curved uh, element that we just designed. We're going to let's lock that into place and then we'll copy it. Sorry, let's go to copy, duplicate, duplicate two, duplicate three. Now I'm just going to use all this this way. I'm going to flip it. No, yes, yes. I'm going to flip it. Flip it, flip it. Good. Come over the co the cup. And then I just flipped. Uh did it not work? Okay. Guys, look at what I'm going to do. You see, let me show you again. I went to the cup. This is the shape, right? And then I'm trying to flip it so that it will look this way underneath, right? But it didn't work. What I'll just do is go to the shape option, select a square, drag it little, come here, place it here, and I'll drag it all the way on top of this element, this uh, element that I highlighted. Then once I've done that, I'll just go here, look for that element, the same element I highlighted. So I'm just going to do this to see. No, it's not it. It's not it. So it's the one on top. So that's it. So that's the one I'm going to select. You can see the square shape that I drag all the way in into it up there. So what I'm going to do is I'll select the circle shape. Is it this? No. Is it this? Yes. Okay. We'll select it and that element there. And then I'll merge them together. Automatically, it will now disregard this the, the the default reaction or character of this uh this one on top here the one that I originally made so it was behaving like this one until now i have changed its character or its attitude towards functioning into a different thing entirely so it's not going to behave like this particular element anymore it's going to be it's so not like a copy of this one so having merged both of them just close the earlier session then I light on it and go back to cup. The moment I flip, you see that it obeys that function. Now you can see what I mean. Right. Good. So I'll just come down here and do this. Don't worry. I'm trying to create some a kind of synchrony, synchronism here. Just playing around with these shapes as well as, oh no, I think I, uh -huh. all right, trying to play around with them, with the shape. So I'm going to turn this way. Okay. 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 All right, guys. Now, to blend this shape here, all I just need to do is get a circle shape here. Come here, select circle. All right. Closing. 
then I'm going to drag it all the way here. Now, let me change temporarily. Let me change the background of this design to something else apart from white so that you'll see what I do with these white lines and all. All right, so we'll go here. I'll come, probably select these. No, that's transparent. I want something. Okay. Okay, let's use this. Good. So now this circle shape is what I want to. I want to use it. I want you guys to see clearly. So I'm going to zoom in. All right. So I'll come this way and then pin in place. So I'll zoom this out. I want to have something that will complement the letter D. First of all, let me take this circle to the back. I'm sure you guys are watching what I'm doing. Huh? Don't worry. It's our first tutorial for design. So I just want to see how much it important it is for you to uh, how much important it is for you to pay attention to what you're designing for a brand. You have to have deliberation with your job. You have to be conversant and intentional with what you're doing. All right, so good. I'm trying to mark the line curve of the letter D with this circle. So I'm sure you can see how I place it at the back. It's just to mark it out. Now that I've gotten it, I'll just bring that circle shape to the, to the front. So I'll click to front and it's back. Good, I have it. Now I want the way it's placed on top of this, this uh, curved uh, element. So I'm going to match that circle with that curved element so that will create uh, something else. Okay, so I'll match that circle shape with the curved element and then I'll match both of them. Like hitting match and you can see it now have it now has the circle shape already inside there. Now, I still want it to be locked in that place. I don't want it to move. All right. So, guys, remember the letter D is at the bottom of this. It's, been, it's behind it. It's beneath. So, I'm going to use the, the erase color tool or the color eraser tool. You understand? To take away this white and as well create a curve here that will blend with the D. All right. So, I'm just going over to the, I'll just go over to the erase color. And remember what I told you about the white. That is, this is the reason why I, I changed the background color from white so that you can see what happened to this white. So when I hit it automatically, you see what happened there? Now we have a kind of curve around our letter D. Perfect. I'm just creating design. See, it is abstract. It's, there's a message here, but I am creating something, something that is going to be acceptable. You know, the, the aesthetism is going to be perfect. The sense of aesthetism is going to be perfect. And at the same time, it's going to deliver its message. Remember, it's all about delivering the message with graphic design. Okay, so let's zoom out by hitting the value and go back to where we were before. Okay. Having done this, the next thing we want to do is let's delete this. Yes, let's delete the next one. Yes. Okay. We're still not getting a hang of what we're doing, right? No worries. Now, one thing about a laundry service is that you have to work with a lot of uh, detergents, soaps in action, you understand, because you are washing, you are rinsing and all. For that reason, that is why the name of this brand is called Rinse. It has something to do with laundry, okay? And we are inculcating the word laundry also into the design. And in this same design, we can see that there is a hanger, you understand, to shows that, of course, one of the major tools of a, of a laundry service is the hanger. In short, nearly the job will not be done if there is no hanger available, no matter how common it is. Okay. Now, another thing I want to bring in here is a bubble-like element to, you know, emphasize more on, on the message I'm trying to pass in here. So I'll just go over to my gallery, import it in here, and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, we're just going to be trying. I'm just doing all this now until I get something that I will accept as a logo for my clients. All right, so we'll go over to the uh, phone gallery now.
So I'm going to search for the email. I think I have it on the, the image. I have it under download. Already I'm in download, so I'll just search for it. Search for it. Okay, this is it. Import it into the PNG file. So I'll just import it into this. Now, let me zoom out a little bit. There's something I'm trying to do here. I want it, there's a way I want it to align into this design. All right. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, let me go over to Coop and flip. Guys, I hope you're seeing what I'm trying to do here, right? I'm just trying to get what angle will be better for my design. I just so this is what you're going to do with this. You just ensure that you take your time. This is what logo is all about. It's all about achieving your aim. Achieving your aim. All right. So before we do anything, let's probably duplicate this um bubble. So make a copy and keep it up there. Right. Okay. All right. Let's rasterize it. Let us make it a two D. Uh, into a 2d element instead of a 3d so we just come over here click on that come over here so it becomes like this normal red color let's give it our red color of design of this design okay this is it once it's okay then now just reduce it a little bit bring it in okay having done this i want to go to opacity i will use the opacity what i want in this logo is just like a shade of it all all right all right does it make sense of course it does so guys, just crazy ways you think you come up with ideas in your head and you try to work on them and see the way they blend into your design. All right. So I'm going to create this now and you're seeing the way it go is going. Now, remember that this is on top of our, our other elements. So we just take it to the back. All right. It's supposed to be in the background, not uh, to the back. It's, so it's better now. All right. Yes. Okay. Okay, we can, let me copy it again, in case if I need to add more of that bubble elsewhere, I think I'll have to. Then, <clears throat> having done this, just come here, lock it into place. I like the positioning here already. Let me see if I can do something with this. Okay, okay. Okay, let me reduce the opacity as, as well. Take it to back two. Yes. Okay, guys. So let's not make our design too much, right? So I'm going to do this now. Next thing I'm going to do here is come to this button, duplicate it. I want to try something with it. But before I do that, first of all, reduce its size, pull it out. Then I'm going to give it a color. I'm going to give it a color so that it's different from what we're doing. Let me see. What color should I give that? Let me pick a color from this. Where are, the, where are those? Okay. Let me pick a color. Let me just give it a dark color, but not completely. Okay, let me just give it a black color for now. Right? That black is too black. 
so I'll just do something like this go back too much yet anyways that's not my last color I'm going to use with it so okay I'll go to the eraser tool and then take off a part I don't need in that element which is this part zoom in open it up so that you can actually see it clearly and then pin to place and I'm going to wipe this place up yes all right I haven't done that no I think I okay let me use let me do this give it the color black okay I hope you all are seeing what I'm doing okay I haven't done that I'm going to take this one above it or bring drag it drag that element down below this one so it goes underneath it all right let's make sure we put she's on it well yes we'll probably increase the size a bit to 55 let me position it up okay yes I think we have something there now we'll do the same with this let's lock this into place lock our bubble into place okay this other bubble we haven't used it so let's disable visibility for it come to this element down here and duplicate it let's get let's be done with this tutorial now okay haven't done that reduce the size a bit drag it out this way and go over to give it the color it out and drag it this way uh -huh, no not too much go over to color give it the color black as well just like the other one yes I've done that go to the layer option this is the element let's drag it and bring it underneath this particular the one we copied so that it will be underneath so you can see what we've gotten from doing that okay, let's position it so this other part that is a little bit out of place will blend together we can do that by Selecting that element, use the position tool. See, and blend it together. Now our rings and all is a bit out of line. Okay, let's see if we can do something about it. It's supposed to be all that. Okay. Okay, guys, I see what's happening here and know what to do about it. Just have to drag it in a little bit. Yes. Okay, a little more. I just want to show a sign like, okay, you see that? Mm -hmm. A little more again. No, not. Okay. Then we'll okay it go over to this layer option select the letters no the rings letter do this this not laundromat 
this influence and that, then we move them collectively a little bit. Yes. Okay. So, guys, we have our logo, right? We already have our logo. I'll just bring in the this logo that I duplicated and kept earlier on. Unlock it. Bring it. I'm just going to use a little part of it. This part up here. That's the part I'm going to use. So, we'll just go over to the Erase tool. And I will erase this part out. So I'm just I could use the group uh, tool to do this, but I'm just using this eraser tool since it's new in practice to you guys, so that you can be able to be more conversant to how it works. So you see, I increased it, so I'm erasing out everything, everything. All right. Okay. No, not total. So. You keep doing that and ensure that you have wiped out everything you needed to. Okay. See. Yes. I just need those five bubble uh, elements there out of the whole thing. So I'll just bring it here. You know, just to have some kind of synchronism there. Now that I've done that, remember we gave it the color red. So I'll just go over again. And I'll just do the same thing as well to it. Don't worry, guys. Our logo is looking. Hmm. laundry ish right okay so use the opacity drop the opacity to yes i don't want it 30 is okay don't want it to be too loud there that is good so i haven't done this obviously our i don't like the way this part here is showing it's looking out of place so i'll just go select that bubble yes then i'll take out that part so today we are using a lot of the eraser tool. Which part is that? Let me see that part. Okay, the big one is on the side. Okay. No, let me put it the big one. So it's this two here. All right. I haven't done that. Yes, you can see we have nothing overlapping below the laundry there. Yes. So everything is all is retained within the curve. There is a disalignment there that is actually a style. It kind of dis a deliberate disalignment. So that's why it's important for you to pay attention to, to the design principles, to read them. Understand? It's like reverse, it's like reverse psychology. You understand? There is a way you turn uh, the, the negative around and it, 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 it becomes, uh, it functions, it starts functioning in, in a positive kind of way, uh, if you get my, uh, my point. So that's what we're just doing all around here. The bottom line is we already have our logo and all. We just want it to look fanciful enough to collect our money from the clients. That is all. <laughs> all right, guys. So I haven't done this. I haven't done this. What is the next that we are going to do? Just to bring in the slogan. Okay. Let's move this a little bit. Okay, that is good. Okay, yes, we now have our logo. See, it is just like that. Okay, don't worry. You're going to get the hang of this finally. All right, next thing we're doing here is... Give our logo a different shape. Though it looks okay, let's bring back our white background. The black and the red. This is not the ultimate color that I would want to use for this. Oh, sorry, guys. This is not the ultimate uh, color I really want to use for this logo. Right? Yes. It's not the ultimate color I'm going to use for this logo. So let's bring back the white background just to see how it looks on it. Okay. Well, that's it's perfect. We have a good job here already. Now... At this point, this is where, when I'm designing a logo, once I've gotten all the elements I want into my design, at this point, I begin to save my project. Okay? If there's extra designing I need to do, I can as well go back, re-edit, or edit the saved project. All right? 
at this point, because this is the point where I start manipulating to get my color combination for my logo. Whenever I'm designing a logo. So I begin, I start saving different version, different color combination of that logo until I get what actually speaks to me. Remember, every kind of service have different colors attract, attached to them. Usually laundromats, laundry services uses a greenish, bluish, like medical uh, designs and all that. So if the client gives you if the client gives you specific color combination to use for their design, then you have to, that, that's what you're going to use. Except in a situation where those colors actually don't, uh, don't tally at all, don't match. Understand that it is your advice, as it is your duty as a, as a professional to advise them on better color options. All right? So always bear that in mind. So I want to change. First of all, I want to save my project right now. You know, rings. I'll just save it as rings. Remember, I'll give it one. Okay? Yes. Now, I have this color saved. Isn't it? Now, the next thing I want to do, I want to change those, this black color now. I'll just go over. But I just saw something here that I really don't... See, this is what I'm talking about. That you keep working. At the point where you are getting to the end of your job, you will have to pay attention to all the details that are right before your eyes. Because it is there. You're not just seeing it. This hanger shape is actually relying as lying at the back of the letter R there. And it's not supposed to be so. So I have to raise in, separate those two elements. While you see, we are beginning to have a disalignment up there. But that's not to worry. I'm still going to do something about it by moving it and then bringing it down somewhat. And there we go. So you see what I did? Take it up, take it to the left, bring it down a little bit, and they are back in, 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 in synchronization. All right, and then the letter R is free. Good. So now our design is ready. Now, since, okay, we're going to change the color now. I'm going to give it the color, then I'm going to merge everything all together. So I'll go over this element here. I'm going to give it the color. I'm going to use a dark blue color, a navy blue color for it. I want to change every black design here. Okay, I want this blue. This blue is perfect. I'll go over again. You keep looking for those elements that you need. The ones on that are the ones I'm changing. Okay. So I give it the same color blue. And okay. The word laundry itself. Or I can just select everything that, that has that I need to change. So let me just select them all. So I'll just select laundry. There is the letter N. The letter N is going to be is to remain red there. But the other uh alphabets are going to be changed. Our bubble will remain red. Okay. Except if we see no our bubble will remain red. Okay, let's just do sorry, I keep hitting this button. Let's hit this. Alright, guys, let me just do it. Sorry, let me just do it individually. Okay. Let me just do it individually. Go off, come here. Go laundry. Go to color. Color here. Select this. Good. See, we're beginning to have another another thing coming up now. Change by changing the colors. Yes. Now, you see, by the time you start working with these colors and all, you see, your job start taking different shapes. Okay. Now, you see, it's now a different look entirely from what we had earlier. Next thing I want to do is go over again and save the job. Okay. So I keep you keep saving them differently, keep saving them differently until you get what you want. Now I'm not going to save the editable file again because I did not add anything here apart from changing the color. So I can always do that to that other one if I deem it fit to change colors there. All right. Now this is my secondary color that I want to use with this design. So I am going to get an alternate color, but I'm not going to work here. I'm going to show you how to use how to manipulate colors again in a different way. But first of all, having saved this job, the next thing I want to do is merge, go over to the layer section, section and merge everything on our arts board. Okay, so we just merge everything. Everything. Yes, now we have our logo. This is our logo. For this client, for this business, 
I think I've gotten the perfect logo. You can see the bubbles, the hanger, the hanger shape there. These curved elements there, the pits, the pits, the bowls and all that you're using in con containing the water that you use, probably the drum, whatever basin you're using, and then the name of course, and the letter N is just showing, you know, style. And the message is very clear. So the first, anybody seeing this, the first thing that comes to your mind is, is this a laundry uh, logo? First thing first that comes to your mind. Okay, now, so the next thing we want to do is to actually now begin to arrange our job for presentation. Having designed the logo, you still have other things to go with it. Remember that you will have your phone lines or your, you know, your work descriptions typed out and all that. You can always do that. We're not going to do it in this particular video with this logo. All right? I just want to show you a 2D formation of logos. There's 2D, there's 3D. Okay, this is the 2D formation. We're just using single, single color, single design. We're not adding much effect. Just the element itself we place in the right position and alignment. Okay, not forgetting the hierarchy in the most important part of the design. Okay, and having done that, we are only adding primary colors, not no gradients, you understand, no color effects and all. When you start adding gradients, color effects and all to your design, it becomes a 3D design. This is just simply the 2D basic design, all right? Remember that our class, our logo design class is two. It's a very, it's a very broad topic, the logo design. So in another tutorial, when we are going to des uh, design an abstract, another kind of abstract video um, uh, logo, I will be showing you how to add those, uh, what is it called? Those elements to your design. Okay, now that is the information about your design. Then you mock it up. We're going to actually mock up that particular logo. All right, but this is a 2D formation logo. So we're going to leave it this way. Reduce it this way. I'm still going to do it this way. All right, let me use the positioning, the relative positioning to centralize it. That is good. Now, I need to bring in text. So I'll just go over here and I'll type out I'll type out. Let me show you something basic. Long dramat with mm, capital. I want the width in capital. Space with a difference. All right. Let's just use it. This basic a slogan for this design, right? Then let's give it the fonts. I'm going to use. I'm going to use a. Uh, I'm going to use. Let me check. Now don't worry. You're going to have this. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm using Symphony Bold. Let me see how it looks. No, it's too tiny. Okay, I'll just use Poppins Bold. The popping bold is usually good for logos. Popping, Montserrat. There's there, there are sans fonts that usually blend with all kind of design. All right, so that's it. So I am going to switch our class a little bit. Then I will bring forward how to install fonts so that we will have all that, how to install font and how to remove background from images. Then we can now be balanced so that when we start all this design we know what to do and what not all right so laundromat with a difference we still have to reduce don't worry guys i'm just trying to create a perfect job here just bear with me look okay all right all right Okay, guys. Uh, yes. Okay. I haven't done this. This is our slogan. We'll just give it the same color, blue. No, not padding. So, color. Give it the color blue. Right? And then, we want to have a kind of stroke around this text. 
too much too much maybe one one yes two is enough okay okay so we're already getting done with our design let's position them properly select both and position properly i'm using this option so that you guys can know how to do it you know uh, collectively so yes good now all we just need to do is bring that later the, the text element up close to the logo itself a bit so let's go to text option use positioning move it up a bit not too close okay okay increase size a little bit so guys you keep playing around with this thing you don't have to rush it all right you don't have to rush it remember you're trying to create a work a work that is going to go far i want you to always remember that as a graphic designer you are a very important person in the world when you are letting out a message when you're designing a message take your time to ensure that there is balance in every aspect of the design all right having done this just our work here is done but before we go i'll add a shadow somewhere here to just give it a kind of feel so i'll just go to the shape go over to the shape tool come down here select this particular shape okay maybe you're not seeing it let me let me okay it don't want to add internal color let me go to the shape tool here and then go to color all right if i click on this it's going to turn red the fourth color then i'll search for something i'll create shadow with is that right or is this is that i want it a bit dark okay let me go let me try this first now simply drag here all the way all the way okay drag it all the way okay a little bit that way first if i drag it let me expand this yes then just follow what exactly I'm doing and you're going to get it. Okay. Then I'm going to use the relative positioning to bring it down. I mean the positioning tool to bring it down. I want it to look like the, 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 the slogan there left the shadow beneath. You know. Yes, I'm just doing this for beauty, which is all what design is. It's, which is another important part of designing. So never ignore these tight little details. okay so i'll go over to shadow shadow come up here okay you see it's emphasize i'll go to this part here and select shadow here increase the blur all the way yes increase the blur all the way mm -hmm. come down here inner shadow as well that too i'll go back all the way mm -hmm then i'll go to opacity no before then inner shadow blur all the way yes then i'll go to opacity then i'll drag opacity almost all the way so you see what i just did you can see the shade of the sh you can see the shade there right aha isn't this lovely guys thank you so haven't done this we're done designing this logo now you can see the color we have, but I like I told you, this is not the ultimate color I am going, I am going at. What I am targeting to do is what I'm going to do next. Before I do that, I am going to merge the slogan and the logo. Remember, you must have already saved your logo. Okay, let me even do this like this. Save the logo. You want to save the logos if you have it arranged this way, just simply disable visibility, have only the logo there, okay? go to your save option turn it into transparent here and then save image as png first when you're designing the logo ensure you do that first before you do all those designing with the jpg those ones you're doing that for presentation for it to be appealing to the viewers whosoever come across the logo all right so now that i've done that save the logo i'll just simply enable visibility if i want i can still save it let me still go back and save it transparent wise because in certain certain for certain purpose i may just use it with 
the slogan. So just go over, save it also, ultra, save as PNG. So I just can pick it maybe for web design purpose and all. All right. So having done this, I can now go back to the JPG format, save these two as save JPG format so that you have different, you know, different aspect of this design that when later you now sit down to look at it, you will have options. You understand, okay, what have, what you've done so far. Now, I haven't done this. The next thing I want to do is now to give it the color I actually set out for. I have a mind for this design. And I know one way to do this. And I'm going to show you that way. First of all, I need to merge both the, uh, the, 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 the text elements and the logo. All right? So having merged it, ladies and gentlemen, come down to this part, to the shape option, scroll through the tray, and go to color filters. On getting to color filter, what you, I need you to do is simply click on you and drag it to the value where I want it to stop. Yes, 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 almost there. Almost there, almost there, almost there. Yes, 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 I just passed it a little bit. Yes, guys. Yes, this is what the color I have in mind for my logo. See what I did? Let me show you again. All I simply do is towards the positive aspect, I increase the value to 134. Increase the value to 134 and you will have exactly what I have here. It's as simple as that. The next thing I want to do is increase the brightness. A little, a little. Yes, I have gotten my design. So guys, this is what I had in my mind when I set out to design this logo. See, it takes precision. You think about it. You think about it. You start putting this picture, the whole idea, start building up, building it up in your head until when you're confident that you have a clear picture in your mind, then you go at it. All right? So this is it. Rinse Laundry now have a wonderful logo that depicts the kind of business they are all about. So guys, thank you very much. We are done with this, logo, this tutorial. See you in the next.